Oh, come on, man. What is this? I don't even know what this POS is. Piece of junk. Oh, it's so heavy. Hey, 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 yeah. what are you doing? You just throw away stuff when you don't know what it is? I mean, it's a wire recorder. It weighs like 35 pounds. It would rip right through the bag. And there you go, walking away from me again as I'm explaining what's going on. It's an old machine that uses uh, magnetic technology to record stuff onto a thin wire. So guess what? We can use it because we're weirdo musicians. <laughs> I know this is the made on tape channel, but today we are making it on wire. Trust me, they're related. This is the Webster Chicago Electronic Memory Wire Recorder Model 288-1. This particular unit was probably built around 1951, and instead of using magnetic tape, sounds are recorded on this very, very thin stainless steel wire. What? You heard me correctly wire. It is so thin that you probably can't see it in this shot, so I'll show you some b-roll. Funny enough, this recording medium predates magnetic tape by decades, but the principle is the exact same. Like magnetic tape, the wire is pulled over a head, a record head that is also a playback head, it, very fast, two feet per second. The head, as you're recording, magnetizes the wire in accordance with the signal being supplied by, in this case, usually a crystal element or ceramic element microphone. Important to note that this machine only has two settings, dictate and transcribe. So when you wanna record, you go to dictate and it's ready to go. When you rewind, you have to make sure to change it to transcribe. Otherwise, you're going to erase over what you just recorded. The microphone even has a switch that'll start and stop the spool. You don't need to hear that recording right now. That's for later. This microphone was recently repaired. Uh, crystal elements, they generally don't survive the decades, and this one was no exception. I had to send it off and get repaired. Here's a photo of what it looked like when the repairman sent it to me. Shout out to Dave at the Harp Mic Shop in Salem, Oregon for fixing it. Some of you super nerds might be wondering what the frequency response of the machine is and the wire itself. Well, here's one of those nerdy diagrams right now. More history. So the person credited with inventing this technology of recording to steel wire was a guy by the name of Vladimir Pushin? Voldemort Punchin? Valdemar Pusin. He was a Danish engineer who invented several cool things, but he patented wire recording in 1898. Uh, on a side note, many of you watching this probably know, but magnetic tape as we know it today, with its high bias signal input and plastic backing, was improved, invented by Germans in 1941. So, yeah, a war secret. Magnetic tape already existed previously, but it was the Germans, Nazis, who really brought the technology into modernity and made it as high fidelity as it is today. Americans did not obtain this technology for obvious reasons until 1945, and it still took some time afterwards to reverse engineer what the Germans had done. And that's where this machine comes in. Wire recorders in the United States came to prominence in a sweet spot, a little sliver in time from the late 1940s until the mid 1950s until basically the whole thing was rendered obsolete by the much superior magnetic tape that was to come. I would love to go down this rabbit hole, but I highly recommend that you just check out Techmoan's video on the wire recorder for a more detailed history and overview of the machine itself. Unique recordings. Since this format is so old, it's almost certain that any spools with recordings on them that you happen to come upon today will be 100% totally unique recordings. And my machine was no exception. It came with four spools, only one of them was blank. So imagine my surprise when I first spooled up the wire recorder, hit play, and these ghosts 
from the past came through the speaker. Very cool, kind of creepy too. Later on in the same spool, someone recorded themselves playing the piano. Pretty well, I'd say. If you're interested in hearing that entire spool, I've posted a video that gives you the whole experience, start to finish. The video link will be below, and it'll be at the end of this current video. I've been blabbing about it, should I fire it up and just record some talking and hear what that sounds like? Sure, why not? You'll hear more uh, from this machine later, but to turn it on, you just turn the volume knob. There you go, it's on. And remember, to record, you switch to dictate. And now this button, if I hold it down, I'll be able to talk into it. Now I make note of where I am at the in the timer. Uh, this keeps it's kind of it's kind of like a uh, it's kind of just like a tape counter. Same thing. It's just a mechanical mechanism to show you where your place is. Oh, and of course you got to switch it to run. This right here. There's three modes: uh, run, stop, and rewind. No fast forward. The connection's a little bit bad, so it's trying to run, but when I push it, you'll see it goes very fast. And now we are talking. We are talking into the machine. Testing, testing, testing. Oh, I'll, I'll pull it back a little bit farther. I'm getting a lot of clipping, but I like that, right? Well, let's hear what that sounds like. All right, let's go for it. And now we are talking. We're talking into the machine. Testing, testing, testing. Uh, I'll pull it back a little bit farther. I'm getting a lot of clipping, but I like that, right? Pretty neat, huh? As you can imagine, one of the great dangers of this format, and one of the reasons why it didn't last, is because you saw how fast that machine is flying, and that thin wire, it was prone, prone to snapping. And one of these spools, if it's an hour-long spool, holds over a mile of wire. So imagine that snapping and, and creating a mess. That's not the end of this machine by a long shot. I don't know why, but I really love objects from this time period especially uh, that were truly built to last. There will definitely be more videos down the road using this machine in a production sense and maybe randomly some music recorded on it as well. Remember, if you want to listen to an entire spool of ghosts, there's another video posted. Go check it out. Stick around to hear me hack through a Beatles tune recorded and played back on this wire recorder. With that, as always, peace and be good to each other.